First aid, first aid, first aid. Probably it's fair to say that first aid is the best book for studying step one. However, if not used correctly, this book might end up wasting a lot of your time. Hello everyone, my name is Malki Asad, a plastic surgery resident in the US, and when I took my step one, I scored 271. And I know that step one is pass fail now, you don't care too much about the score, but listening to the tips of someone who scored high might help you ace your exam, pass from the first time efficiently without spending so much time. And in this video, I want to share with you a few tips on how to study from the best book for step one preparation, which is the first aid. The first thing that you need to keep in mind when studying from first aid is that it is a review book. It's not a study resource. So if you're someone who doesn't have a good foundation of medicine, who needs some base knowledge before they go and do review books, first aid is not the book for you. I've seen so many students who start their step one preparation with first aid, and that is, in my opinion, not a good idea. In my opinion, you have to have a good base of knowledge. So you can't start studying pharmacology from first aid. You have to study pharmacology from your school materials, and then after you're done, you can go to first aid or you do a round of you all which explains the topics very well before you go to first aid because remember first aid is a review book so if you are a u.s student i recommend you start with your school materials and after you're done the first round or the second round you can go and start preparing first aid if you are an international graduate who studied very well during their basic science years you can start first aid after you're done with these materials or if you finish these uh, materials well but it's been four or five years since you finished these materials in school i recommend you touch on these resources by studying u world or kaplan book before you go and study first aid so don't let first aid to be the first resource you study or the first resource after you've been away from these materials for a long time Use another resource to understand the topics before you go and do first aid. However, some students ask me, can I study first aid alongside my other preparation materials? So if they're studying in school, they would finish that material from school and after a day they study first aid or they study these materials in the morning and at night they would study the respective materials from first aid or they finish a block of microbiology from UWorld and they study these materials afterwards at night from uh, first aid. And in my opinion, that is not a mistake. It's totally fine if you do that because you already built the base by studying these materials and now you're using first aid as a review book. But this way, you're going against a very important way of learning and retaining information, which is spaced repetition. So if you do the studying in the morning or during a day and then the next day you review these materials from first aid, you're going against the idea of spaced repetition, which means leave space between your review times. So if you studied microbiology today, don't review the same materials tomorrow. Maybe review it after a week or two or month. So that's why I recommend you finish whatever resource you are using in your school or your world or Kaplan books or any other book or video preparation materials. And after you are done, maybe go and uh, study first aid. After you are done, maybe with all the preparation. So study microbiology, pharmacology, pathology, and then do first aid. And in this way, you're doing spaced repetition. You would forget some information, you would go back and study this information, and that helps reinforce the connections between your neurons. Now the short-term memory turns into a long-term memory, and I have a full course on how to study for exams, some techniques that you can use to optimize your memory, your retention, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. But in general, you try to avoid repeating the same information from a different resource a day apart. Try to give it some time, your brain can get the information and then you review it. So to summarize the first tip, if you're interested in using first aid as a study resource, make sure you understand these concepts before you go and study first aid because first aid is a review book. If you're planning to use first aid alongside another study resource, that is fine. However, that will go against the idea of space repetition. Always try to keep some time between studying the information and reviewing it to avoid wasting your time. The second tip when it comes to studying first aid is related actually to the first one, which is understanding every single thing that is included in first aid. Everything that is in first aid is high yield. Of course, there are higher yield concepts than others in first aid, 
but consider almost everything in first aid to be high up. That's why they included it in there because these are the most important concepts to be tested on step one. So don't say to yourself, oh, it's fine now. I understand 50% of the concepts and I'm go gonna go on and then later on, I'm gonna try to understand them. The first round is the time to understand. If you're not understanding most of the information or half of the information that is in first aid, there is something wrong. You have to go and study from another study resource before you start first aid. You need to understand every single concept that is included in the book. And this is a common mistake I see most students do when I talk to them and advise them about what to do for step one. I ask them, are you able to understand and tell me about each concept that is included in first aid? And they tell me no. And I tell them, did you go already through the first aid book? They say, yes, we went twice through the book. I was like, so you went twice and you're not, still not able to understand most of the information there? That is not a good strategy. When you're studying, don't just read the information. Passive learning does not help you, does not help you uh, get a good score or pass the exam. And again, I have a full course on how to study for exams and you can check these techniques that can help you improve your memory retention. But it, when it comes to first aid, you need to understand every single concept. So if you read a line and you don't know what is this about, you either need to search the resource that you studied from, UWorld or your school materials or videos, or search Google. So if it's a small amount of information, let's say 10% of the information after you studied UWorld is still not clear to you, it's fine, you can Google it. But if there is 50% uh, on first aid that you're not able to understand, there is a problem here that you need to fix before you go on. Because if you continue reading, the problem will not get resolved. So in that case, you might consider having a tutor and I'll leave the link for our tutoring services. If you're interested in having one-on-one -on -one tutor explain topics to you, that will help you a lot. If you're interested in studying another resource, you might consider that, but don't just read and say, oh, I will understand it later. When you're studying first aid, you have to be understanding every single concept. And I don't mean by understanding or memorizing because with more rounds of studying, you will be able to retain more information but understanding what they're talking about because step one and step two ck and step three is all about understanding just memoriz memorization will not help because if you just memorize the words the exam has like a big paragraph of question and they will ask you about the concept behind the information not necessarily the wording of first aid book so make sure you understand every single thing on the first aid book Another important tip when it comes to studying first aid is should I take notes? And this comes whenever I talk about anything related to medicine or studying. And I made a detailed video on how to take notes if you're interested in watching that and I'll leave the link for that in the description below and in the cards above. But for first aid specifically, I don't recommend taking so many notes. If you want to take notes, make them very, very minimal. So the notes should not exceed 5-10 pages from the whole book. Why? Because first aid is a book. And if you wanna take notes, why do you wanna keep them in another place? Why don't you just underline or highlight certain areas, maybe underline first round in pencil so you can erase it if you wanted to, because I've seen these people who, these students who highlight the whole book and now the whole book is full of highlight and I don't know what is important, what is not, what is the part that I wanna actually review versus not. So if you wanna take notes, consider doing some underlining, highlighting, and taking minimal notes on the side. Other types of students tell me that I can only study in flashcards. I can only study in a question and answer style, and that is totally fine. But just be mindful that creating flashcards for over 600 pages book is gonna take time. So just keep in mind that you will be spending days, probably a month, just trying to create that deck and flashcards. So if you have the time for that, that is fine, but just be mindful that time is limited whenever studying for any exam. Step one, step two CK, remember that you have to do research. The gap starts from the time you graduate. You have to do US clinical experience, work on your personal statement CV. There is so many things beyond just studying for the exam. So just be mindful that this will take time. Flashcards work very well. They work on an idea of active learning because you would be seeing the question and trying to answer it. But you can do also a form of active learning by looking at the, at the book. So if you see, for example, a title of heart, heart failure, you start thinking in your head, what are the causes of heart failure? What are the management of heart? What is the management of heart failure? What are the symptoms before you look at the information? So this is a for, still a form of active learning without seeing a flashcard. If you are comfortable with flashcard and this is the only way you've been doing it, it's fine, but just remember that this will take time. 
Another question I get asked about that relates to notes when studying first aid is, can I put my notes on the first aid book? And this is a very risky situation because if you study your world and you end up putting notes from over 3000 questions on this book, you won't have space to study. It's gonna be extremely overwhelming and you won't even know what, what notes are referring to. So I would be very, very careful in putting notes over first aid. Maybe don't put any notes from your world on the first round of your studying because you might find the information there already. Maybe it's on a different page, maybe it's in a different section. So keep your notes from your world separate from your notes on first aid, especially in the first round. And then after the first round, if you find extremely high yield information that you wanna put on the first aid book, it's fine. You can put a small amount of, of notes, but don't overwhelm yourself by having another book on the book itself. So if you want to take notes and put them on the first aid book from other resources, that is fine, but make it as minimal as possible. How much time does it take to finish the first aid book? And my answer is as long as it takes. The first aid book is a very high yield collection of information from the first aid exam and you need to study it well. You need to understand, as I said, every single concept, if not every single concept, more than 80-90%, you need to have this information available when tested in the exam. So. If it takes you a month, you need to dedicate a month. If it takes you two months, you need to dedicate two months. As long as you know the information, I'm fine with that. So you, it doesn't necessarily, you have to study first aid. As long as you are aware and familiar and knowledgeable about the information available in the first aid book, that means you have good knowledge. And you can test, of course, yourself through assessment tools, through UL self-assessment, through the MBMEs. And if you feel that you are very comfortable passing with very high scores, you don't. You might not need the whole first aid book. But if you are using it as a study resource, as a review resource, make sure that you are aware and knowledgeable of the information in that book. Generally, it takes around a day to study 10 to 20 pages. So if you're studying 40, 50 pages a day and you're not very good as a baseline, that means there is something wrong here. Because I've seen these situations where students just read and think they are learning, but in reality, they're not. So ask yourself at the end of each page that you are studying, Am I able to present that information to myself or to someone else? And if the answer is yes, that means you have good knowledge of the information in that page and go to the next one. If you feel that you're still far away, you still don't know what's going on there, although you spent an hour, try to solve the problem. Don't just study 100 pages covering gaps. The purpose of learning here is to overcome the gaps, not trying to cover them. So as I said, most students generally finish between 10 to 20 pages a day, which means the whole book would take you between one to two months. However, students vary. Some students might finish it in 20 days. Some might take three months. It varies a lot based on your baseline knowledge and how fast you learn. And the final question I'll answer for today is how many rounds of first aid should I do before I go and do my step one exam? And again, my answer is as many as it takes. So if you do one round and you're ready, go for the exam. You don't need more rounds of first aid. You might need to review your other resources that you've been relying on like first aid or other books. But if you're ready from a first aid standpoint, you don't need to review it more. If you feel that you still have information that you don't remember well, you wanna review it once, one or two or three times, you have to review it as many as it takes. So if you're reviewing five and six times and you're still having a problem, again, try to find what the problem is. Just going over and over a resource will not help. If you study 10 times or 20 times, if there is a problem that you are not resolving, this is not, will not solve the problem if you just repeat it. Because if you repeat it, it gives you something we call the delusion of learning. You think that you're learning, but in reality you're not. You're just reading. So if you feel after the second, third round that you're still not comfortable with the information, you have to reach out to someone and we definitely can help you with that. We can schedule a consultation with one of our advisors and try to understand what is the problem and try to resolve that rather than just mere repetition of the book. So to summarize what we talked about in this video, first aid is a great resource for studying for step one. However, if not used correctly, it might waste a lot of your time. Be mindful when using first aid that this is a review book. It's not a study resource. So you have to have a good base of knowledge from your school or from your world or from other resources before you use first aid. Don't use first aid as the first ever book when studying for basic science topics. Second, make sure that you understand the majority, if not every single thing that is included in this book. 
because understanding is key in passing and getting a high score on the step exams. Third, when it comes to taking notes, don't take so many notes from the book somewhere else because that will take so much time. If you like to study in flashcard style, that is fine, but just be mindful that this will take extra time. And if you wanna write notes from other resources like you are on the first aid book, make them minimal. Again, to avoid wasting time and not overwhelm yourself with so much information on the first aid book. How much time does it take to study the first aid book? It generally takes between one to two months, but this time period varies a lot between students based on how fast you learn and your baseline knowledge. How many rounds of first aid studying should you do before you go to the exam? I usually say as much as it takes. Usually students spend between two to four rounds, but if you needed more, if you needed less, that is totally fine because this will vary based on how fast you learn, your baseline knowledge, and what other resources did you use. That brings us to the end of this video. If you need any one-on-one -on -one guidance on how to best study for first aid for you all, for step one or step two in general, go ahead and check our USMLE tutoring session that I will leave the link for that in the description below. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos of my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad, my Facebook page Malka Asad MD or our email info at the Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your step one.